ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to come to you today live from the PG Stadium here in Manchester, England. It is the Questerly Conflict <laughs> 2022. We have a sold out capacity crowd here, Alex. We do. There's, there's hundreds, hundreds of people here. Virtually, I'm sure. Virtually, I'm <laughs> sure. My name is Mike, also known as Preach, and I am joined by Mr. Fat Boss Alex, who has made the trip up from London. It's good to be here, man. I'm so excited for this. When you brought this up to me, uh, well, about a month ago or so from now, and you were just like, do you want to do this? I was like, yeah, as yeah. if that'll go together. This looks to be absolutely an amazing event. The teams have put so much effort in. Like, not even, you can't really put effort into actually, you know, getting better at PvP. You don't need to worry about that bit. But the theming, dude, like, they've got their own locker rooms. They've got their own, like, stories going on. It's crazy. It's it so is good. as Final Fantasy XIV yeah. as it could possibly be. <laughs> Basically. And we have prepared the most fun afternoon day for you guys we could possibly do. In association with GT Omega, we are going to have some of these chairs to give away that we are sat on right now. You can't have this one. This is custom for me. But you can you can have Al's. You can have mine. You can have Al's as well as some display and stuff to give away for you guys and of course the grand prize for our winning team today each of them each of the five players will be receiving a chair from gt omega uh, for their contribution into the questling conflict we are going to be having our opening ceremony shortly but alex has raised an interesting point about this is practice extraordinarily difficult i believe we've got a range of teams today al that from the sweaties that are very, very try hard into this. And to the yeah. guys who are just here to have fun and have a blast and play into the theme. I think that everyone here is try hard, but some people have just try hard with their, you know, glamour, which is the most important part. Let's be real. That is the most important part. Um, a little do we like the teams know it's actually weird. The PvP part doesn't matter. It's the five nicely dressed people. They get the chest. No, but no, in all seriousness, you can't actually practice as a five-man team nope. in uh, with uh, this particular game mode um you can only do solo queue in theory you could do like scrims i suppose because you could do custom games mm -hmm. with another team but i don't know if any of that's been going on or to be honest how helpful that will be so because of that there isn't really like a set meta so in terms of the actual gameplay that we will be seeing I can just see it being super varied, like in well, terms of the what they're going to be trying. The meta that we've seen evolve, because of course, when the Crystalline Conflict came out, the meta we saw evolve over the first week was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw very initially whatever was kind of overpowered with a simple limit break that just shredded the teams. We saw those becoming very popular over the course of the afternoon mm -hmm. as everybody was trying out different jobs, trying to get what was working. It's like, oh, this is a little bit more awkward. This is a little bit more simple to play. This is a little bit too powerful. Oh, tanks are actually quite good here because, of course, Squeenix went down the road of simplifying PvP entirely. Oh, so yeah. it's just more of a, not a MOBA style, but a MOBA gameplay style where you had just very few abilities, mm -hmm. simple stuff, so purify yourself, heal yourself up, very, very simple, get out of jail free card use it once use a nice defensive shield everybody gets the same thing so you could swap jobs very easily and what yeah. we saw on the release day of this i know i did this is i immediately went and just unlocked jobs and went straight down mm -hmm. to the wolves den so i could then just pvp and i could do that immediately without having to do any msq or any building up of that job over the levels because it instantly scaled you gave you aerial abilities yep. and off you went and you've been pvping over the last couple of weeks what have you been trying out um i, I gotta admit like i was going for everything you know because i thought it'd be good because i'm not really known for pvp mm -hmm. in the slightest but i was like you know what let's have a good go of everything i'll, I'll start here and i've got most of the classes unlocked already so i started all of it and i eventually got to machinist and i love it oh and yes. i was just like i really should try other classes but just a few more on machinist and then it was like three days later um yeah so it's it's great fun though like just how everything all works together it honestly does feel like a little bit of a limit break fiesta yes um, which, which i'm looking forward to seeing today yeah it's just it's very quick very fast and just fun it, i'm not sure exactly the most um, crazy competitive sort of like um, meta and all that stuff going on, although they have done a ton of balance changes. I Surprisingly, I actually thought when this mode came out, it's like, this is clearly designed to be a bit unbalanced, right? Mm. Which is why it's solo queue into ranked and casual, because you can make some pretty dirty compositions here, which we're likely to see today oh. is exactly how far the guys can push it into more of a meta narrative of, of how powerful when we get all those jobs stacked together. Uh, but when we come to our normal playing game, you are soloed in order to make that work. So what we're going to see probably is a little different than what you see in your usual games, where sometimes these games could go 30 seconds almost. Yeah. You start, one team just dominates, wipes the floor with you. Uh -huh. But if we get that mix and match, which we're hoping to see today, we could see games go several minutes uh -huh. while they're pushing backwards and forwards and really trying to make things work. Well, yeah, especially with overtime, because I've had definitely had games where I've got completely stomped. 
Um, even occasionally, I have stomped others, believe it or not. But um, it's more like at any point, as long as the time hasn't ended, there's nothing stopping you from coming back, which is something that I do really I, like. Because of the overtime mechanic. Some as of long my as best games it. are when it feels like we're getting stomped. And then somehow it kind of works together. Your team's not feeding. They're not one you know, one after the other just mm -hmm. running into the rabble. They do manage to get that foothold back on the crystal. Oh, yeah. And then you start coming back. And it's fucking, it's it's just so exciting because you're like, we yep. lost, we lost, we lost. And then your heart starts ringing. It's like, we could win this. <laughs> we could make this happen. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to see some bloodbaths today. Despite the lack of practice, the teams are put together. We're going to have some Lalafell on Lalafell crime. Yep. Yep. <laughs> one of our opening games is going to be Team Shin Eaters versus Team Lalafell fellas a full on mashed potato full mashed potato oh, yeah. with gravy it's gonna, there's <laughs> gonna be a steak pie and sausages mixed into that uh it's gonna be really nasty but we are preparing now for our opening ceremony i've been looking forward to this i've heard of all of the things that they've been putting well heard that they've been putting a lot of effort into this so i think we're going to be jumping straight on over to the arena Yes, let's, let's go down to there, the yeah. Crawler Stadium yeah. itself where the teams are preparing <laughs> to unleash their fury today. And there we can see the que the Questel in conflict in all its glory. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> the Golden Arches itself. And I, we do invite any of our viewers who are able to come down to Ward 5 on Spriggan uh, to join in for the crowning ceremony for who our winner should be oh. at the end of this tournament. We would love to see you down here for the actual giving away of the winners. Everybody took works on their glam there, Al. Yeah, no, it looks really good. And of course, we're going into, of course, the Tunnel of Quare, um, <laughs> as is tradition, um, with each one of these tournaments. You could just see them all, they're so shiny. That new emote coming in, uh, coming in right at the right yes, time. Yes, I was there. very aware. I'd much rather see this than the hippos, which I still have not time to unlock. Oh, same. And I am consistently taunted by it as we move through the golden passageway Fantastic. into the Quare Arena itself, where we are about to meet our teams, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to see and should hopefully be coming down here uh, any moment now and uh, displaying their wonderful glam oh. is alongside with it. Little tippy tappy going on there. There is the a little dancers. bit of tippy tappy going. I on. like that they color themed themselves for the sides of here. Oh, oh. the music has been. Oh my god, they're teleporting in. <laughs> Fantastic. Of course, with vampires, you can be invisible. <gasps> oh. oh, they're appearing from the ceiling. Oh god. <laughs> That's so good. Of course, there's. Uh... Oh, now we've got two. Oh my. Oh, that is fantastic. This is menacing. If I was the other teams right now, I would be spooked. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to team number one, the Quez of the Night. Their vampiric souls here to feast on, not Lala's, but everybody <laughs> else. So. Anything but Lala. <laughs> oh. Even remember the music. Extraordinary. All right. Absolutely excellent. And there they are in their full team attire. <laughs> that Van Helsing style, ready to come and claim their victory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Quez of the Night, take your place. That, oh, God. That. I don't even know how they did that. I don't even know how they're doing this. That is absolutely fantastic. I don't that even was know the how. First team. That's the first team. Well, we've got to move swiftly on because, of course, the sex, uh, second team coming in now the Grime Scene Investigators. They're sick and tired, these janitors, of clearing up the arena of everyone else's blood. It's time to spill some of their own. Yes, it is. is. They are renowned for sweeping up Eorzea. Today, they intend to sweep up the heads of the dead. <laughs> they have been banished for long times. I've been responsible. <laughs> <laughs> they have been so. <laughs> oh. How did they get on the jumping from a balcony? <laughs> <laughs> the grime scene investigators in full force in That's order to so clean good. up their victims. Oh my god! I hope I actually don't want any of these teams to ever get eliminated. They no. just and he's back on his hey. feet. That's how they look after each other. The grime scene investigators taking their place on our stage today. I mean, we perfect oh. line. Wow. That's impressive. Isn't there one too many? They seem to have recruited somebody. It's the well, team they might there. just have a spare. Oh. Is that a ghost on the stage, Al? I believe it is. It it's is. the Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? I oh, know. The it Ghostbusters <laughs> are here. This is team number three, the Ghostbusters. They have been sent from 1980s New York in order to manage the ghostly infestation of the people they kill. The Ghostbusters are here and in full force. And what do I see in the background, Al? Oh, no. It's him! <laughs> He's here! He's back! Wow. Okay. Well, they've certainly got it going on. 
the marshmallow man himself the is here and he has man. allied himself with the Ghostbusters. Oh, but he's down. <laughs> this is fantastic. We well, do need a team of five. So, completely yes, understandable. Exactly. We do need a team of five. No new recruits from any of the new movies. They are the originals and the best who have taken their place on the stage. The crime scene investigators are here. And what do I see coming down the stage, Al? Oh. Uh, can we zoom in? What? what? I can't. Is anyone on the stage yet? I, oh, I better watch my mouth, actually. You should watch your mouth. This is the Lala this fellas. is the Lala fellas. Yep. They are the mafia. They are the crime. They are the, the crime family. Of course, recently, their uh, boss was killed. Um, apparently, it was a Hrothgar in disguise. Jesus so Christ. These are ruthless undercover individuals. undercover Lala fell. So, watch yourselves. They I might mean, be small. And watch the floor. That is a fearsome-looking team. They, if, even if they don't win, they're still stealing your wallet. Of course, they do have an advantage. They are harder to click on within the 3D space. <laughs> yeah, and Tab, <laughs> not very effective at FF14, unfortunately. Uh, Tab, not the most uh, reliable source. But the Lala fellas take their place alongside the Grime Seed Investigators. And who is Ooh. this that is coming next? I hear the patter of... Oh, oh here comes my our God. other full Lala team. The Shin Eaters. The Shin Eaters are here. These are literally the holy scions sent from heaven to purify the world. We're not sure what they're purifying oh, yet, They're though. dying and now oh. being resurrected in the light of their gods. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed by the 12 themselves. The Shin Eaters are here. Formerly nice, friendly lalas of walking the streets and now returned as angels of death. That is terrifying. That is horrifying. I don't know, there's something about an all Lala team that I think is just a little bit overpowered. Woo. And they have disappeared into the void. <laughs> well. Oh, and, and they're, they're back! back. <laughs> 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 oh, they're back. I do see the Black Mage has taken the stage there. But the Shin Eaters, and we do know that game number two will be the Shin Eaters versus the Lala, the Lala fellas. Oh. That's going to be It's going to be an absolute nightmare. Now, of course, how many teams is that so far? Really nice, five teams. Three more teams remain for us, but next is the team that has a lot of support in the community. Oh, dear. Yes, they do, as they are known for not only their prowess in the gym, <laughs> but their prowess with the ladies and the men. Yeah. <laughs> they are not picky. Ladies and gentlemen, I do present to you Hot Tub Esports. There's nothing even to say. They haven't got a backstory apart from them just being chads. Their only issue that I know they ran into in preparation for this tournament was not practice. It was not finding enough concubines. It was, in fact, the lack of baby oil. As <laughs> while they were working so hard in preparation for this, they went through no less than 64 liters of baby oil. Even in high order. They're in high order. Yes, they are. And they're ready to destroy, <laughs> my friends. But from fun and frivolity, we move to authority. Yes, as I do believe, coming down the stairs now, are the Crystal Crawlers. Yes, they are. They yeah. are here to bring justice, Al. They are here to bring justice. Hopefully enough justice that, of course, Alfie will decide to bring back the Crystal Braves. Indeed. We spoke to the Crystal Crawlers earlier, and we will be hearing from these guys in the next few moments. But the Crystal Crawlers are here to prove a point to Alphano himself that it, all hope is not lost. And through bringing justice to the arena, they once again can reform the Crystal Braves. <laughs> that it'd is be, their hope. It would be, be pretty sad if they go out in the first round. Like the Crystal Braves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and last and most certainly not least, of course, we do need some villains. We do. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you our final team of the eight. It is Team Allegan has, oh, has arrived. Down. Team Allegan released from their tombs recently after a spot of Graha Tia's blood was leaked into their prison. Yeah. We don't know how it got there. We don't know who did it. But Grahatia's blood did, unfortunately, make its way into a sealed chamber <laughs> of the Crystal Tower. <laughs> and Team Allegan has been unleashed. And they fight, of course, for the glory of Alag. And there we have it. Our eight teams all together lined up. This is going to be... This is going to be a show. Who do you pledge your allegiance to, Alex? Ooh. Who well, do you want to see? I don't know. I do like the idea of Hot Tub Esports. Ghostbusters as well. They're all so good. Oh, do I have to choose just one? All right, we do. Uh, I mean, I think we should have a Gamba. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think a Gamba is necessary, but uh, I am going to use my Boomer Prowess 
to side with the Ghostbusters on this one. I would like to see the redemption of the Ghostbusters after so, so many failed reboots. I'd really <laughs> like to see the Ghostbusters <laughs> rise to the glory, uh, and the, rise to the glory they once held back in the day. So I will pledge my shield to those. Okay, well, all right, I'm going to go with Hot Tub Esports. i got to admit, I'm just down for the queer heads. You're looking it's forward to the backstage shenanigans. Kind of. You know, maybe I could be a groupie. Quite possibly. That is far too close to a la-la stomach for my liking, <laughs> Alex. Uh, I'll let you know. And, I, uh, I think anywhere within the same zone as a la-la uh, is Okay, now we've got la-la upskirts. Production! Production! Uh, 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 Production! Uh, um, Can we move to the casting desk? <laughs> Production! <laughs> <laughs> Look away, avert one's eyes. Avert thou eyes from the la-la upskirts uh, currently taking place. Teams, can you come together for me? I'm not sure if they can actually hear me. Probably not. But if we can see you all together in your wonderful stance as we get prepared to move into game one of the tournament, we would love to see you do that. My God, what a stellar performance, a stellar introduction for all these teams as they there come together go. here. In our first open, let's read our game. So we will see the Quez of the Night, the Vampires in <laughs> round one will go against the Grime Scene Investigators. Well, we'll be followed by Lala on Lala Crime, the mashed potato dinner of the shit eaters versus the Lala fellas. Yep. And then, sadly, your pick and my pick oh, go yeah, head to head realize. in round one. Like, <laughs> Hot Tub Esports versus Ghostbusters. Mm. We probably should have organized that a bit better. <laughs> well, uh, at least we picked, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we totally did. And, of course, rounding it out our uh, first round with the Crystal Crawlers versus Team Allegan. Woo! Now, of course, our first rounds are going to be best of threes. Yes. Um, oh, and of course, we can't there have... There we are. There we are. We have... Uh, we are, uh, that's our, that is actually very representative. Oh, you're right. We did sit on the wrong sides of each other, Alex. We are terrible at the most basic things. Oh. The level of production going on behind the scenes here is we sat on the wrong sides of the couch. No, you, you sat correctly, but because I was facing the wrong direction, I got confused. Over. We hate each other, clearly. We also do have a merchandise uh, stall on the other side of the arena. Uh, which is, if you want to pick your merchandise for your favorite team, you can go and do that. Again, we do invite you down to Ward 5 uh, in Spriggan on the Chaos Data Center for the closing ceremony when we will be back here with everybody in order to crown our victor and, of course, the second and perhaps third place uh, yeah. because we do have a tournament style. Now, as you just said, Al, if we, when we're coming back to the desk here as the teams get ready. Yeah is the way we're running this format because we want it to be a really really fun day for you guys we have a lot prepared for you that's going on in between the games so get excited for that uh first round so the first four games which were drawn on wednesday so the teams have been able to prepare a little bit yep. for who they're going to be facing will be best of three single elimination we will not be running double elimination, double elimination this time around we might do that next time sure uh so best of three double elim uh, single elimination then as we move into our uh, final games, we will have best of five. Yeah. But we will have, uh, there's our brackets there. You can see our first opening games. And as we move into the next round, we will have best of five leading into the finals here until our winner is crowned, Al. I know. It's it's going to be a, a busy day of PvP and action within the, uh, within the arena here. Mm -hmm. But of course, the games... We actually have no idea how long this is going to last. We've actually been talking about this a little bit as to, you know, how long do you think this will go for? We it, didn't know. It, we had no idea. Yeah, while we were preparing the show, because obviously we would prefer double elimination. That mm -hmm. gives us the fairest amount of games for everybody, because as we know with this game format on the Crystalline Conflict, is that we could have a team eradicated within a minute. <laughs> it's entirely possible that they just get curb stomped into the floor. Yep. Um, and maybe would have done better other way. So that's something we're going to watch for. But also, if we got some really good teams or some really good gameplay going on, we could see up to like 10 minutes if they're yeah. really pushing backwards and forwards to really see good who thing. claims victory here today. But of course, it isn't just us. This is the story of the teams themselves. And I have been told that there's been a little bit of bad mouthing behind the scenes. So I think we can throw it over, as I do believe the Quares of the Night have a little bit of something to say about the Grime Scene Investigators. Let's have a listen. Crime scene investigators, you have been invited to join us at the Festival of Blood. We will dance under the beautiful moonlight nocturne and then feast at the Black Banquet. What is on the menu, you ask? Why, isn't it obvious? We will be feasting on your blood! <laughs> so join us and be welcomed into our domain, where we will clean up the cleanup crew. 
We will gorge on your bodies and feast on your blood until all that remains is a grim scene investigation. <laughs> coming up very shortly. So uh, after that message, what do you think the Grime Street investigators are thinking? Well, they're either riled up or they won't leave the starting platform. Part of me thinks I wouldn't leave the starting platform. Just let it go. There's no point. You, you're just going to get annihilated. You're quitting on day one? Yeah. No blood will be spilt. No. So who'd you fancy out of this game? So oh, you've, uh, you, you didn't side with the Grime Street investigators. You I did, did not. not side with the Quest of the Night. Nope. So what, I mean, I, it's the Quest, right? Well, uh, after that promo, yes, but I feel I feel that the Grime scene, I don't know, they're, they're stoic individuals, you know? They're, I think that they might have more built-up angst and anger. Wood. Yeah, they, they, they've been doing nothing but cleaning that arena. They know that arena well, you know what I mean? And they've, they're sick and tired of it. They're going, like, full-on, just off the wall. So it could be in their favor. They are used to doing it. I know uh, I've PvP'd with some of these guys. I know that in the Grime Street Investigators, we are looking at certain characters that are practiced. Let's put it that way. Oh. We did say that a lot of the, a lot of the sweatiness uh, does seem to edge towards hot sub esports, but that absolutely does not mean that there aren't some sleeping dogs lying in these teams. And I happen to know that the uh, the Grime Street Investigators do have somebody in there. So it's time for game one. It's for our first game. Let's I'm head so in excited. for the arena, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Let's head in. It is the Quest of the Night going one on one against the Grime Scene Investigators. It is game one of the Questling Conflict 2022. So here we go. Going to be starting off. Oh, I do like this I, This map. is my favorite map. I do like this map. Nothing too crazy going on, but on the Astra team here, we do indeed. Megato, Min, Strider, Arvain, Freya, and Xander. Yep, he will be representing the Quest of, of the, the night. night. Yep, and on Umbra's side, we have Yatak, uh, Amst, um, uh, Bragart, uh, Volgolia, and I didn't. I was too slow. <laughs> I was too slow on the ground scene investigation. Well, I'm sure we'll get to see them again as we step in here. What do you think their strategy is going to be? This meta has shifted up quite a lot uh, over the last uh, few weeks. We've seen people decide to come down the edges, use them them speed ramps so they can get round the back of the yes. of opposing team. Tanks not really jumping in too much anymore. They used to go in and do some uh, sort of taking the initial hits. Uh, but we haven't seen much of that going on recently as well. People tend to hang back around the corners and line of sight. Yeah, it's um, it, this map is quite open, but it has certainly got some choke points um, that seem to be uh, giving us grief. But um, let's see. In terms of the classes that they're going for, though, one team we do have here. Um, well, there goes there goes the Grime Scene investigators running in and getting ready. To, oh, they're setting up. Oh, you can see this. A couple of line of sights at the back. Holding round, see Dude, what the other team does. I do this every single time. Yes. They're just waiting. Because, of course, this um, central area at the moment is not open. No, nope. um, Braggart trying to bait a little bit. Oh, they're, they're wondering who's going to go first. Oh, and it does look like... Oh, oh the quests are instigating. They are straight in there. They want blood out. They certainly do want blood, as it all does seem to be kicking off. We've got some guards coming out already. Xander no one very low down. already. Yes. They are yeah. punishing Xander, using his cooldowns there, effectively getting his shield up. There we can see he's, he's trying to reverse course. Oh, uh, we've got a very low summoner, but it looks like we are able to uh, maintain ourselves ever so slightly. Oh, he's oh, about he's so to go low. down. It's, he's on 1%. He's ah, dead. Oh, it. my God. Our there we go. Blood. Yeah, the there's first blood taken. For the, uh, that was a fortune for the Grime Scene investigators. Have had a player go down, and now the Quest of the Night tried to capitalize on that, pushing that crystal forward out. Yeah, no, they're going to be pushing it forward whilst keeping them back. You do need someone with Whoa! Oh, the oh! Quest lose two players simultaneously, and that is going to open the door now for the Grime Scene. And three players down now for the oh, Quest. Oh, and you can see that they're starting to. Well, actually, we're going to have our Warrior sticking in there, trying to keep it in place, but he's going to be taken down very, very quickly here, popping his guard, but it's not going to be enough. And Grime Scene's are. pushing. Grime Scene is pushing. They are sweeping the floor here they have just done a four player kill on the vampires but of course vampires will resurrect do you think it's a uh, an, a problem alex <laughs> that this is being played in the sun it could be yeah no it's a little bit unfair for the teams that we have got it uh, playing out in the sun but at the moment neither of them have got a ton of limit breaks available it looks like we are getting some built up 
on our quest of the night right now. Yeah, we do see that the crime seat does have a three available, but they have lost Morgalia. Their healer is down, and that is causing a fall. The limit breaks are coming out as the crime seaters are getting clapped. Whoa, yeah, no, that's that summoner limit break coming in there, doing an absolute ton of damage yeah. um, to everyone involved, enhancing that summoner afterwards a little bit to be a little bit more pokey. But it actually looks like they managed they're to holding weather, they're holding storm. on. Yes, they GSI has managed to take Freya out. Uh, now, oh, there goes the crystal pushing back. Now, as the Quez are starting to push forward with that crystal, Braga is holding the line. Oh my God, that one Grime Suit Investigator is just sweeping the floor, oh. but he can't hold on. It was Arbs who was holding the line there as the Quez are in full force here, yeah, and they're all together inside the that crystal. The Grime Scene Investigator is managing to get 50% of the way there and, of course, starting to unlock it, because once you get halfway, you then have to spend some time basically unlocking a little yep. node on the ground. Um, but they so managed the to do Oh, the Grime well, Seat is up, but they don't want to push him without full strength here. No, it's best to wait. They might be able to, like, send in some harassment, use some guards maybe to kind of, of course, guards reduce the damage you take by 90%, but you can't do anything. But it looks like we're just going into a full fight there, popping some of our limit breaks, but we have some uh, to return. Oh, oh, the, oh, oh, the Quest of the Night are almost a full team wipe, Alex. Yeah, the Quest are down. Of course, we have got our Sage's limit Two break. Two down. Down. And it's already gone. Oh, yeah, no. as you can see once again, the Quest of the Night focusing hard on Vagalia, the healer of Grime Seed Investigators. Vagalia is down, which is causing the rest of the team to falter. But there is only three players up for the Quest but against the... Oh, they're back down to three in the Grime Seed as well. It's 3v3 right now, and it's pretty even, although we're going very, very low on our Umbra side there as we do lose. Another Ooh. member of the Grime Seed has gone down. Two yeah. members still standing. Their healer is back. But is that going to be enough against all five of the Quez of the night? And now standing on that crystal is pushing forward for the Quez. Yeah, and they managed to get it on to the unlock point. The thing is, this is very much close to where the uh, Grime Seed Investigators are going to be spawning. So, you know, they do have a chance to bring it back. There does seem to be a little bit of skirmishes not on top of the point. Um, but we're getting some assassinations coming in as we do manage to get two members down. Well, Vagalia um, is having a hell of a game, Al. Every time Vagalia, Grime Seed Investigators healer, gets onto their feet, they are being clapped as they're pushing forward. Ooh. This is very dangerous now for Grime Scene. If that crystal goes just a few percent more, it is game over. Well, we've still got 45 seconds yep. left, so there's always time for a pushback. Of oh. course, we do have it so that the Quez and the Knight have managed to get through that lock point, and they are able to push it a little bit oh, further. Oh, down. The tank is down for Quez as the Grimes Investigators are now back to full strength. Yeah, GSI, I think they'll be able to push it back here. They just need to do a little bit of cleaning up. <laughs> it's coming have. back! Yeah. I can't believe it! There the Janet is saying no! Yeah, we're doing well, we're doing well. We've Come got, yeah, on! GSI have got all five players up, whereas Crime Scene only have... Uh, um, no, sorry, <laughs> the Quez only have t uh, three available. Oh, four right now. And this could be really bad for the Quez, Al. If they start bleeding members Check. one at a time, they're not going to be able to come back. We've just popped the Dragoon Limit Break, though. There it goes down. If we combine that with some of the other Limit Breaks available, we are going to start seeing some GSI members go down. We are now in overtime. So if at any point the GSI aren't able to two push Two members this. down. Ooh, we got two members down. There's four up for the... Um, this is going to be tight. Two it's down so for the tight. quest. They are battling to the death inside this crystal. Three, it's a bloodbath. Right now. Oh, Lord. Uh, and it's not looking good for the quest right now. Really struggling to keep the HP of their players up. Four I've players up for the Sage now. Limit breakdown, so the Sage will be safe in there. If they want to be damaged, they, the opposing team need to go within that barrier of uh, swords. But doing so does deal a lot of damage to them. And you can see that might even allow them to turn the tide here ever so slightly. As GSI have all of their members alive where we have two dead. 2-2 um, two, two down on GSI. Oh, no. And then the third down for GSI there. Oh, and the, tank, the attack is getting absolutely spammed right now. But he is the tank. He is doing what he can. And they switch target, actually. They have swapped Ooh. over to the Bard and have taken them down. They still have a long way to go with this crystal, though, Well, They do have a long way to go with this crystal. And of oh, they don't. There we go. And there it is. The Quest of the Night. The well of the Night take game one of three. Holy cow. What that a massacre that was. Went into overtime. And it went to and from. But as soon as Quare of the... Like, they, of course, they didn't really have a good foothold. Crime, uh, Grime Scene Investigators did start off a lot stronger. But once they did that retake and started pushing it, it never went back. No. So, well done. Uh, but, God, did Grime Scene Investigators there stand tall and stand they proud? They did. They really Watching, held on. I believe it was Arms of the GSI, the last man standing with five of the Quez of the Night pounding. And he was like, no! <laughs> this crystal's going nowhere! It's not happening. But I did see towards the end there is we started to see the kill order 
start to stagger, mm -hmm. which makes it a real nightmare for the regrouping team because yep. you want to come back in the strength of five, especially as the other team has full force. And when you don't have that and you're literally bleeding members in mm -hmm. one at a time, it's just not going to pay off for you. Yeah, and sometimes, especially when overtime's going on, you can't wait. You know, you have to be on that crystal because otherwise it, the round's over. You know, you have to get people on there. So it can lead to that point where people are sprinting in, popping their guard, which gives them that 90% damage reduction, makes them immune to CC. And then once that guard's gone after five seconds, that's it. They're just, they're, they're dead. Bring in the next person. You basically got this cycle going on until eventually, uh, of course, Quares of the Night were able to just keep the crystal to themselves. Well, GSI, not out of it yet they still have a chance but gsi need to win this one or they will be saying good night and the vampires will feast on their dirty soily mop water blood <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump straight back in as we are going to be jumping into a new map we're going to be trying to play on as many different maps as possible three being available um so uh, let's have a little bit of a fly on over as i do believe our game is ready i know personally i love the vampires but I would really like to see GSI pull this out. It is 1-0 to the Quez of the Night, yes, the sir. Blood Drinkers themselves. And oh, I think Volcano Map. Favors melee a little bit more. Yeah, there's a lot of um, uh, like sort of posts and line of sight that you can be um, doing here, um, which can make it a little bit um, difficult for um, range to keep their distance. You need to. It kind of draws you in quite a lot. And also positioning for range is a really, really big thing. But on this map, when you have all of those... Um, bombs going off, those living bombs going off, then you're really, really going to struggle to maintain that positioning. Yeah, so. a lot of opportunity here for some crazy slowing effects to try and, and get people stuck there if they're trying to, especially when people are greeding out keeping players in there uh, and try to use their mobility to get out. There's definitely a bunch of abilities that can put the stuff in their tracks and uh, unfortunately get them hit. Uh, by those explosions, this Bomberman-style map, which will blow them up, Yeah, uh, as I'm sure. And if you're not familiar with this map, you will see these very straight corridors and pathways. And through the map, we will see these bombs appear, which will basically lock down those areas and put a huge explosion into them. So the players need to duck into line of sight and avoid that explosion as best they can. As the Grime Seed investigators come charging out, no fear in their eyes. Oh, up. no, but of course, both teams have to just sit behind the pillar for no reason. This happens in Solar Queue, and it happens here as well. We yes. hide behind the pillars waiting for our... Um, oh, trying to bait Brag oh. out. Trying to bait him out. He, he's getting some success there. He's oh, used his shield a the guard. early there, That's a very think. early guard, but it looks like we are going to be kicking it off. Um, as we're going to be going into our first battle here. Wow, it's already quite explosive here, Mike. Oh, the Grime Seed investigators are AoEing hard. They are AoEing the Quez as hard as they can. They were trying to focus Xander there, but it looks like they made a very, very quick decision to target swap over. Oh my god, their healer is down for the Quez of the Night. And again, GSI trying to make an early aggressive push here, Al. Yeah, they really are. Um, as we are getting, so, like, getting the healer down is quite a big, um, uh, quite a big deal. Um, because, of course, it, it does reduce that sustain. It's not as crazy as something that you'd imagine like in, in World of Warcraft PvP where you're doing nothing but slamming heals. That's, you can't really do that as a healer. No, you, you, you you've got not able to uses. churn out the HPS that might be needed. Ooh, uh, but another quest another. of the night have gone down as GSI holds strong uh, in order to in order to push push forward. And we will show you some play up POVs in a few minutes. Yep. Uh, but right now, we just want to get an overview of what is happening here. As the Quest of Night, they, the GSI have lost Bragat. Yep. Uh, he went in to try and bait them out. And now, once again, the Quest are formulating that same strategy again out of pushing their healer. Morgalia is getting heavily, heavily attacked. Uh, if Morgalia can hold on, because of course they were expecting this this time. This happened yeah. every time last game. So the guys right as another Quest of the Night has gone down. Wow. Freya Isgaband has fallen and GSI is Plowing on. Arms got the targets, which their arms is not ready for that. But yeah, no, managing to lose a member there um, from a GSI. So it does look like mm, no, it's even four and four here. But of course, um, we are having Grime Scene investigators. Oh, read out for Quest of the Night. It looks like Min Fast Rider is about to go down as well. If Min can't hold on, this is really feeding into GSI strategy. Min has gone down. Yeah. But Galia is going to get enough opportunity there. You can see that heal back to full mana, full health. GSI looking very strong. Oh, but they can't stand on it as we out. are having the eruptions going off here. Make it quite difficult to stand in the place. It is a lock period, on. so they had some free time there. They're trying to push it out as soon as it humanly can. <laughs> so get that moving. But oh. this has bought some really good time for the quest of the night out. Really has. So it allows them to reform. And we're going to see quite an explosive fight here now. As we also do have the bombs. If you see, oh, they've the got to get out of there. 
then you can you can put yourself in quite a strong position. Of course, the bombs leave behind those damage increases that the DPS are really going to want to eat up. It does scale with your LB as well, so you can do some really, really big damage. Oh, this is cut. The limit breaks going out hard, Alex. Ooh. Two members of GSI just got limit breaks into the floor as Xander goes down for the quest of the night as well. GSI are really going to want to hold this crystal in position. They really are, and it looks like they may, may very well be able to, as we do not have a lot. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Oh, here we like might see the last two members of GSI go down here. Only Braga and I'm standing. As Hopefully the they're able come to out. escape. For GSI's sake, in this position, you shouldn't be trying to, you should just try and have one person get out of there, in my opinion. But it looks like, no, they went for the double deaths. Of course, they're, I think that's the first time those people may have died. So yeah, that's they, the first time in this game those have died. So, so shorter res timers. Only 10 seconds rather than the 11 or 12 seconds that you might have otherwise had. But it does give Quez of the Night a long time to now finally start pushing into GSI territory. It certainly does. And we have two LBs ready for Quez of the Night as well. Not super powerful ones, but we have three available over on GSI. This next matchup, it could be the decider. Well, obviously. combining it with the Warriors um, limit break that can really make everyone a lot weaker here. And you're going to see an explosion going out. This is going to be really quite nasty. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing some players go oh, down. There we go. Quez of the goes. Night have lost Magato. And everybody else is running really Whoa. low. Freya goes down for Quest of the Night as well. Losing a monk on top of that. So this is looking real bad. Can GSI tonight. keep Yatak up? Their tank and just providing that constant support and harass. Braggart taking Ooh. low damage on the third. Four members of the Quest go down in this conflict. And there's no way that healer's going to have to run for their life. Right. And that's not happening. No. The, All five members down. Even on the sprint platforms, he can still be CC'd, and this is giving GSI time to push it back. This is looking very strong. A nice comeback from how they were looking in the... Oh, yes. <laughs> Getting an entire team wipe. This time, they do not need to wait at the lock either, so they can push right on through, get that extra percentage points. We've got 30 seconds left of the map before Quest we go into always. any kind of overtime. This is pretty much where of the Knights only time to really get everything on go. They need to push and they need to do something big right now. Yes, they do. We have uh, one LB available over on GSI. Uh, one LB will go coming out for the quest of the night. They've managed to take arms now instantly. They immediately took out GSI's arms and Yatak and Braga all taking big damage. Magali looking pretty safe right now. But they're not really pushing for a kill here, GSI. We've still got the Dragoon up. LB. Time, Al. We really need to push that Dragoon LB and use it to assassinate the, uh, the, the... They're so, so low. Here we go. Here it comes down in a second. You should start to see some people explode if they get it on the point. Oh, it's so, so low. I don't think... We yes, we did manage to... Uh Get some members of GSI down. GSI is down as Quez in overtime. The Quez of Night once again pushing oh, forward in overtime. No. <laughs> this is brutal for GSI, who have been so strong all game, but they've not been able to hold it into these final moments. Could this spell the end of GSI, Al? Uh, I really could do, but they've got a lot of work to do. This will give time for GSI to regroup. Members still waiting to res, but they've got to get there. You they've see got charging it. in. He's yeah. ready for action. They've got the Summoner LB with the Warrior LB. Yeah, they've got Big three LBs. AOE LBs that can really do some work here. Let's see exactly how it pans out. There goes the... Oh, oh my God, God. it's Whoa. a fight there. It's a war zone in there. Even if it didn't kill any players, it certainly oh, killed the Oh, but two the members of GSI have gone down in this engagement, unfortunately, as the Quez of the Night still gets a push forward with that crystal. This is really <laughs> on the edge. I think you could be able to bring this back. Oh. This is insane. I don't think GSI could do it. They've got four members dead, unfortunately. And here comes the percentage. Oh, the the healer. And there and we go. The what? GSI has been eliminated, Alex. Where's the night? 2 0 to the Vampiric Nightmare that on the was... Blood Day Feast. That was really impressive. That, that was, was stressful. That was. Quez of the Night bringing that back there. Like, it was It was kind of a repeat of the first um, first game. GSI had such a strong opener. They yeah. knew what they were doing, but what they couldn't, uh, even though they held it for like two-thirds of the game, yeah. when it came down to that last engagement, the Quez of the Night coming in with their very strong limit break combos, and the GSI very concentrated on top of the flag. They were, they were losing players almost instantly. It was a straight-up, like, insta-gib. They would take one down, turning it into a 5v4, and then very quickly they were able to start whittling everyone else down. And the Quest Knight changed their strategy. They stopped going for that healer. Mm -hmm. They knew that was no longer effective. In game one, they were targeted GSI's healer. Immediately, every time uh, Vagalia was getting up, dead. Mm. Up, dead, up, dead. And then once we saw very quickly into game two that the, the GSI had prepared for that, mm -hmm. They changed their strategy entirely and yeah. just started working on other people. Yeah, GSI did manage to hold out like an entire retake as well, um, which is, you know, I was super impressed. I thought they actually might be able to push to the finish and end it right there and then. 
but it just managed with a combination of LBs. It just goes to show how strong some of these LBs can be. If Especially you in tandem. You line oh, them up yeah. nicely because there's definitely LBs you can throw out there that just, if you do it on your own, eh. Yeah. A little bit of harass, a little bit of damage taken, but nothing that the guys can't out heal, they mm -hmm. can't shield from. They've got that time to recoup. Uh, so it's it's been um, it's been a hell of a moment to watch. I was really impressed by Quest of the Night as to how they adapted, changed, and worked on the worked on how they played. Yeah, it was it was super impressive. It was. So let's take a look at Arms profile here from GSI. Uh, unfortunately, we will not see Arms here. One of the players from GSI. <laughs> Uh, who is known for the chesty fat fucking milkers. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who created this scene. I wonder. As Mama Demetresque, of course, moving over, actually recruited by the GSI straight from Resident mm -hmm. Evil Village, uh, reached out to Lady Demetresque to see whether the Lady Demetresque would play in this tournament. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we must bid adieu. Yeah. The Lady Demetresque uh, will no longer be taking part in the Questling Conflict 2022. When, you know, we won't be able to see the hefty booby wooby schmoobies anymore. Uh, yeah, spelled correctly, I believe. <laughs> well, <laughs> are any of those really words? I guess hefty is. <laughs> I think Chris wanted this just because he'd made it. <laughs> just because he's made it. But sad news, ladies and gentlemen. Many people's favorites in the community, I know. Some really good, popular names in there, but the GSI, the Grime Seed Investigators will be relegated, but in their true style, Alex, they will not be going home. They will remain behind to clean up after the rest of the games. True. Yeah, as their punishment. They're, well, no, it's their job. As their job. They, 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 they will get back <laughs> to their job of cleaning up after the remaining games, because they're going to have a mess to deal with in the next game, my friends. We are unfortunately going to see Lalafell on Lalafell Crime and the Holy Scions of Heaven, yeah. the Angelic Potatoes of Death, the Shin Eaters. They have a message for their enemy, the Lalafellas. Let's take a look. I have some words. Lalafellas, fate has decided that we will go toe to toe in a clash of the titans. Now, some will fear facing off against the Lalafell Mafia, but not us, man, because we know the truth, mate. We know the truth. You're nothing but phonies. Look at your shit eyed out. You can't even afford a proper table. It's embarrassing. You're just a bunch of paws playing dress up in your mum's basement. And we're going to end your charade. Because on Saturday, the Lala fellas are going to be dead fellas. Oh, strong words. Shit table. The Lala fellas. I, I mean, you would expect the Lala fellas known for having quite a few gills stored away. But the shitty is claiming that they are in fact paws. <laughs> Who playing dress up in their mum's basement? We can't even afford a proper table, apparently. Wow, that's yeah. rough. That's a, they're, they're in a rough position. Well, it just shows the shinny are not intimidated. They're not afraid. They're not worried. They are more than ready to tackle whatever's lying ahead of them. Well, the thing is, is that the Lalafillers as well, um, they didn't see fit to respond. You know, they're just keeping quiet about it. They'll, they'll let their actions speak for them. Ladies and gentlemen, avert your eyes, but don't really, because we want you here. Uh, <laughs> Some of you may find the next scenes disturbing. Let's go to the arena. It's Lalafell on Lalafell Crime. Oh no. Let's make some mashed potato. And as we do jump into this, we oh. This map, yeah. Yep. This is the map with the knock up. Quite good for range because there's quite long li uh, sight lines, in my opinion. Did uh, you know that you could use guard to avoid the knock up? Yes. <laughs> oh god, that's horrifying. Oh no. That is horrifying. So, Astra, we do have the Shin Eaters, and on Umbra, we have the Lalafells. Yeah. Hopefully, they won't be distracted even. by any contraband lying around the arena and try and ship it off. They are known for stealing whiskey during their games. That is true. Yeah. And perhaps we can have production having a little bit of a move around on the camera on this one as we are heading into this game here. As yeah, it's 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 quite a tough map um, that we uh, are uh, that we're going to be dealing with here. There's one thing that I've noticed, but I've never managed to do. Apparently, there are actually little chocobo feathers up in the sky that you're able to grab when the knock-up event does happen, which is pretty damn cool, if you ask me. Um, but you can see our two teams getting ready and raring. We're seeing a paladin on both sides. No paladins in the last game, so it's nice to see uh, paladins. Of course, being able to keep everyone alive, basically apply an immunity to themselves and a massive damage reduction to everyone else nearby. Um, and aside from that, I think this is going to be... Oh, you're talking oh. all serious? It's going to be... That's rapid. hilarious. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Well, oh, they took the uh, flight there. Of they course, did take the flight. Oh, my God, that looks insane. <laughs> that looks this so is dumb. terrifying. <laughs> As the Lala fellas were in their <laughs> sniffing <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay. We got oh, so how do you get the bushes out? <laughs> In all fairness, there is long grass. They are like Pokemon, ready to jump out at any unsuspecting trainer nearby as we are having a full-on mashed oh potato my pot here. God. As we're seeing absolute annihilation. Shin Eaters already losing a member right there as it seems like the Lala, uh, the Lala fella is really Lala taking message. early control. Maybe it was Mafia Intimidation or maybe it was a protection racket. We don't know. They're sending out hits. They sent out hits and they're actually getting a lot down, losing two members. That's three. Of the shin eaters right there. Yeah, three the shin eaters have been sent back to heaven, unfortunately, and they're going to have to do a redo on that one as they've been pushed off the crystal out. Yeah, no, and you can see them trying to escape, rightfully so. It, you can escape, but it uh, looks like we do lose another member there, losing our black mage, making it so the shin eaters are going to take even more time to get back. What is this um, aggression from the Lala fellas? The Lala fellas took that promo to light. Let's just say, they, they I that's think hot, so. I they are hunting. hunting. They're out for blood. Look, they're not even on the point. I think they have one person on the point. The rest of them are just going around and destroying. They're, are they going to be camping? Oh, there oh. they go, popping those guards to avoid the knockup. We didn't even have any. Uh, oh, there's no one on the point. Oh so my just God, going back. the crystal's going home. It's like, enough. <laughs> you're well off <laughs> shenanigans. The it's the enough. are so out for blood that they don't even care about the crystal. No, they left it on its marker, went hunting them down as immediately. Immediately as the shit is resurrected, they're being killed. Like, Ooh. literally immediately. They're going to have to avoid this knock-up now because their guards will be on cooldown, I believe. Uh, They've got to get in, though. This, this is, is the be final game. point. If they, if they don't get in and that gets on top of it, then that's that done. But they are all getting CC'd. Oh, it's those poor Lala Fellas. The Lala Fellas Merry Christmas. Sweep it. Well, I hope you guys are hungry because potato is on the menu. Let's put it that way. <laughs> My God, they got smushed. I don't think anyone from the Lala Fellas died there. I don't think so either. I think the Lala Fellas uh, have coordinated exactly what they were going to do. They looked at what needed to be done and they went. There was no pussyfooting around at the start of that match. No, they just went straight. Well, of course, you have to have the small five second window where you kind of look at each other. But then that was it. You know, after they paid respect, it's like touching gloves in boxing. Then they just went full in. It snowballed destroyed. so hard for them as well. Because like we talked about that staggered death. Is they, their, their choice there was to get the marker to the point and then just hunt the rest of the players down. We don't uh -huh. need to stay there. It's going to do its thing. It's timed anyway. And they just went on the warpath. And what you had was the Shin Eaters just dead. 10 seconds. Dead. 10 seconds. And their reses were all messed up. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen the crystal just leave by itself. Because everyone's... Because it's bored. <laughs> well, it's just like, I'm going back. <laughs> but are you ready for game two? I so am. Let's see what Let's the Shin Eaters can come up with here, team. Can, yeah, hopefully they can bring it back. You know, that was, that was a little bit of a... Maybe a bit of a shock, you know? If they're going to be going around and trying to almost purge the world of evil, they're not doing a very good job so far. Uh, well, evil seems to be uh, on the menu today. <laughs> uh, it doesn't... <laughs> it's so uh, evil seems to be on the menu. Well, it just shows to, goes to show these seasoned criminals in the Lalafels. There they Ooh. are. Uh, not here for jokes. Sinister evil. God, they're so evil looking. Watching their little straw hats fly across the map is still funny. <laughs> <laughs> what we might see as we return to our favorite map uh, is um, when they actually face someone of a normal height, perhaps the, the, perhaps the Lala Fellas will be stopped. Well, yeah, that's the thing. You can't really gauge their power level. It's like, you know, children fighting children right now. Well, it's not over for the Shin Eaters nope. at all as, uh, <laughs> as they get their <laughs> wires ready. More focused on the wiring than the killing. But they might be able to turn this around. We saw GSI put up a great, great contest against the Quest of the Night. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could be that we will see the Lala Fellas. But the thing is, the is that they didn't have time to recover. That was the thing. Yeah, it, they, uh, it was over so quickly. It would have been better if, like, instead of having three <laughs> members die. Oh, my <laughs> God. So stupid game, man. Um, <laughs> it would be better if they all just died, honestly, at the beginning. So they could all resurrect and go in for another wave. But let's have a look. Of course, they're all paying each oh, other. Oh, way safer now. Ooh. Way where The Shinnias have learned their lesson here. Is they, wow, they they're lose pushing I've never mind. The, oh, my God. What? What? Did they bring armor today? The, what in God's name? They just, just lost three members in, like, fight. That, that wasn't even limit breaks. That was just pure focus time. Are we even allowed to broadcast this? Production, is this okay? This is just a massacre. This is why they're criminals. Ooh. That is a full team wipe before the crystal barely got anywhere, Alex. That was insane. The, I tell you what, the Lala Fellas are a team to watch out for. Any of the other teams of this tournament should be paying close attention to what these little sprouts are doing. Yeah, that's... The, I haven't seen people die that quickly um, before. Not the whole like, team. Not all three of them. No. You not know, the you, whole if, team. if everyone's just like killed the Black Mage and everyone goes on him, and then, yeah, sure, you might be able to nuke one down, but three players back to back, that Look is. Look at the impressive. lack of fear on some of there, Al. Just came on the car. Oh my god. Woo! 
Ooh, we haven't had one death on the Lala Fellas just yet. And we are seeing Shinny is unfortunately being taken out bit by bit. And they can't protect the crystal. The, the, the Lala Fellas are just preventing the Shinny is from getting near the crystal. I think this is game, Mike. This is game. Wow. <laughs> Pack your bags and head back to heaven. I'm afraid you legitimately have just been sent back to heaven. Wow. Shinny is because your tournament is over and goddamn the Lala fellas. They ain't mucking around. I tell you what, they will be going up against the Quest of the Night in the next round. And if you were one of those vampire boys, I would drink as much blood as you can. You're going to need it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd be terrified. Like, wow. That was... The, the Shinny didn't even get a chance to play. It honestly felt that way. It felt like the Lala fellas were so aggressive that they just picked a target. Gone. Picked a new target. Gone. It's like they marked them at the beginning. Marked one, two, and three. Just kill this it person, felt like kill a this meat person, grinder. kill this person. It just a tiny little meat grinder. A swarm of rats that absolutely decimated. You call it Lollafell's rats. That's going to that's not going to uh, help your case. That's going to be accurate. That's not going to help your case. It's, we are four games into the tournament with two teams eliminated. Nobody yet has been able to take it to game three. No. Nope. Uh, as we check the bracket here, you can see the Quez of the Night. Will, well, they had an outstanding performance against GSI. It was back and forth always until really the end. Was. The Quest managed to clutch it out in the end of their games. Uh, but now we have seen in a complete reversal of that <laughs> is the Shin Eaters have unfortunately been stomped into the floor. They're, they're going to be cleaning Lalafell out of their boots for the next week or so, I think. Oh, yeah. The, the, the Lalafellas were a new fate. Can we re-choose? Um. <laughs> Uh, we choose favorites. I don't, know who, I don't know what the audience gambled on at the start of this day, but <laughs> that was impressive. That was impressive, so impressive. and sad <laughs> at the same time. Ooh. I got a feel for the Shin Eaters. Yeah, no, it's it, especially it feels like the other fellas might have been doing maybe some cheeky scrims or something, or maybe they spent a lot of time putting in effort and and strategizing. And the strategy is just go in and annihilate everything. But they might hate more than effort, if I'm being honest with you. Cool. Uh, some stats here from the Shin Eaters who will be saying goodbye. Uh, High Era, who is the leader of their team, a fan of Fluffy Slippers, a pink and white nightmare, the Eater of Shins. Wah! And horrible noise generator. I can totally agree with that last one. And you can see there that, unfortunately, High Era is in a glass cage of emotion. Managing Which to is, climb out, though. It's scheduled for departure five minutes ago. So, unfortunately, <laughs> High Error, your Shin Eaters will not be eating any Shins today. They will be eating the floor. And as the inspector of floors, let me tell you, don't scuff it. Yeah, but you've got to give it to the Shin Eaters, though. I love their thing. They had an amazing mock. They had amazing room. They they did well. They, they, they did Not going to win up. you a chair. <laughs> yeah, they got you in the competition. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> Our next game, though, is one that is going to be a fan favorite. All right, one of the fan favorites is leaving today. And in fact, we have pledged, if you weren't here at the start of the tournament, uh, as we move into game three, my favorite that I've pledged my shield with is the Ghostbusters. And my favorite is Hot Tub Esports. And they are going to be playing up against one another in the next round. Ooh. <clears throat> so this, gonna this be is rough. our favorites, our choices. Me and Alex stand divided on this one, I'm afraid. It is time. The greasy, body-oiled justice of Hot Tub Esports versus the 80s, grimy, pizza-loving Ghostbusters. Here we Let's go. The game. Volcano map it is. Ooh, and of course, on the Astra side, the blue side, we have <laughs> hot tub hot tubby spots. spots. Now, their weakness here <laughs> is Wyatt, who is known as the Affix, playing tank in order to survive a little bit longer. And on but Umbra's side here, we have the Ghostbusters. All uh, very similar. Nobody going with like a five DPS comp or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, everyone's doing one tank, one healer, three DPS. You don't need to do that. Like a tank isn't mandatory. A healer isn't mandatory. Some of the strongest teams I've been in, of course, in solo queue, have been just those pure DPS comps. And it allows you to stomp a little heavier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Community hero here. And in fact, uh, Questling Cup legend Ross Que yeah. uh, will be fielding and leading this team. You can see his mighty girth uh, ready and ready to expose upon the Ghostbusters. But I don't think, I've got to be honest with you, I don't think Marshmallow Man Copper has any fear of Ross Quare. Oh, no. Well, it, probably because he can't see with that mask on. Um, but I'm sure he'll do just fine. He's going to be staying at the back, though, playing on that machinist, keeping nice and far away from uh, Ross, who I believe is on the Dragoon. Yes. Um, so... Well, I, I've, I have PvP'd with Ross Quare in the past uh, during the Legends of Final Fantasy XIV Tournament 21-22. Oh. Uh, and he is bloodthirsty. I can tell you that. He is a bloodthirsty individual. And here they go. The Marshmallow Man showing oh, amazing pace for a man his size. In. It looks like they're focusing down that healer as we oh already have. Oh, my God. Oh, so oh, 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 
Ghostbusters are getting ghost busted. As you see, Hot Tub Esports. Who are you going to call Ghostbusters? Because this is not helping the Marshmallow Man trying to stand his ground. Oh, he's got the guard up and they're just going to completely ignore him as they're going to go back and try and take out our warrior there. It's going to be a little bit of a tough thing to do. <laughs> the, the Hot Tub Esports did forget the crystal. They've got back for it. <laughs> but look at the absolute vitality and charisma of Ross. He may have charmed the Ghostbusters pre-game. Yeah, he very well might have because it seemed like they were caught with their pants down a little bit there. Yeah, he's a strange individual. His mother was a bench press and his father was a dumbbell and that's how he was born. <laughs> uh, and that's why he's exposing himself here with his vascularity. Uh, making it work as the Ghostbusters are having yeah. not a good time. They are back up to full strength though, Al, and trying to reverse this fortune. Well, and the thing is, we have four seconds until the eruptions, and these eruptions can really turn the tides of the battle because you can just start CCing people in it. And if you are caught in those eruptions, one is enough to bring you to half health. If you're caught by two, they will be going down. As we have everyone alive still, Ross is getting focused a little bit. He does pop his um, limit break ability there. All three of the DPS have limit breaks right now. Oh, oh. I know. unfortunately, Ghostbusters did lose Fang there after that limit break. And the Ghostbusters Whoa. getting a weed. Well, I think they got caught in the explosion there, Al. And they lost two more members during that, leaving just their healer and Susenia standing. And look at the Hot Tub Esports. They have all of their limit breaks available. Every single last one apart from Ross. Yeah. Um, this is a bad place oh, for the Ghostbusters pop, to be. Popping that machinist to limit break to take Jesus someone Christ, out This has got to be worse than the all-female remake. This is bad news. <laughs> the Ghostbusters are not doing well. No, they're not. But they're holding out. The thing is, is that it's not over. It's not looking good, mind you, as they're doing everything in their power to try and keep everyone alive. We and are they're bleeding that. in now, Al. Yeah, they have to because otherwise it's going to get to the... Um, it's going to get to that final point. But they do look like they have the majority of people up. Okay, two people went down. <laughs> <laughs> They're all limit breaks now uh, used, though, for Hot Tub Esports, but I think it was enough to seal the Combining game. these two together, perhaps, you might be able to get... No, no unfortunately. Not going to make it as Hot Tub Esports does take it against my favourites, the Ghostbusters, and wow. that puts Alex in a very smug position. The thing is, when you're smug, you don't need to, like, brag to everyone, but, yes, I think... I think I could just see talent, you see. <laughs> That is extraordinarily sad. <laughs> <laughs> I put my shield next to you. I crested next to you, Ghostbusters. I will say this. It wasn't as hardcore as what we saw with the Lala fellas. And towards the end, it did feel like the Ghostbusters. This isn't Copium. We're starting to get a feel for it. But unfortunately, at that point, the entire Hot Tub Esports team had four limit breaks available. Yeah. And they basically crushed well, the thing is, is that they, what I liked about what the Hot Tub Esports did there is that they used their limit breaks. They didn't all spunk, like, spunk it all at once in one big go. You can just like, you know, it's about the Hot Tub Esports. They know, they know how to control these. If sorts anybody of knows how to spunk it, it's Hot Tub Esports. And Let's they did it in a controlled two. fashion. <laughs> they, they dragged it out. Game two. Will we see a game three? I want to see you, Ghostbusters. My side is with you. I want to see a game three just because we haven't had a game three just yet. And mainly just to make it so that the crushing defeat of Ghostbusters is even more sweet. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. I, I mean, I did feel like the Ghostbusters were finding their feet a little bit there. They felt more stable. I don't think they were ready. I think they came into that game expecting the typical meta that we've seen in the last four games, which is let's feel each other out. Who's going to bait? Who's going to bob in? Who's going to do this and that? Yeah. Hot Top Esports just went... <laughs> Fools like Murder, death, kill. Murder, death, kill. <laughs> uh, and that worked effectively, I might add. So I don't I don't think the Ghostbusters were prepared for that. They're obviously, you can't use the same gag twice. That's not going to work. Boyer needs to change his adventure play immediately. Yep. <laughs> I can feel a ban in the works. Um, <laughs> as there we have... Come on, Ghostbusters! Ooh. I could not sit with Ross all day, uh, with Alex all day, feeling good about himself. Yeah, you can. But no problem. I didn't build the stadium for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in charge. <laughs> well... This map, you know, we have got quite a um, we've got a range heavy team from the uh, from the Ghostbusters, so yep. the long sort of map might might do them some good. It might allow them to kind of hell. It might come down to who can hold their guards the longest. We've seen some very early guards. I mean, it's only a couple of players have panicked a little bit, a little bit of early harass. They, they just, popped their guard very early. Yeah, and they just got caught off guard. Um, strangely enough, you know, they just did get completely caught off guard not ready for the stomp that was coming their way and if if you're caught with your pants down then that's it you just get rolled over and unless you can really hard reset sometimes you just can't do anything about it so, I, um, I, I believe i just saw uh oh the marshmallow man is ready to go he's got his, there we go he's got his weapon at the ready as they come flying over and they may once again fly into that wall of honey yellow 
that honey yellow, which is known throughout the FF4 community, spelling disaster for all those who witness it. And we're getting the early engagement again now. Ooh, Al. yeah, doubling. Go uh, it likes, it's nice that they're meeting up straight away going into this. A different um, story here. Oh, uh, it's a different story. We, we are seeing the honey yellow taking some damage here. Looks like they might be trying to focus down an, a different person this time as we did go full out on the healer last time. Oh, God, time. whoever wins this might win the game. This is this is aggressive from both teams, and they're not backing off. This is turning into a little bit of a war of attrition, but they need to just stop picking their targets as we are getting people going lower and lower. We are building up LBs, though, that might allow us to switch it back. Uh, Potentially, you can see Ross doing some huge damage there. And oh my god, the Ghostbusters have lost the player. Ooh. Steph holding tight on that healer as it does look like Hot Tub Esports is beginning Ooh. to stabilize. Steph does go down for the Ghostbusters as well as now Hot Tub Esports is going to clean up here. It's also like GSI is back in action and sweeping that floor. Using them guards just to try and hold that crystal, but they can't get into the circle. No, I wasn't even able to get into the circle, so those guards were, you know, that could have saved them a lot, a lot of time there. And, and as much as you can be jumping around waiting for it, it's going to happen. No, we their goal there was to there. prevent it for as long as possible for getting into that reset zone. Because that reset zone is now crucial for the Ghostbusters to regroup. But look at Hot Tub Esports. They're just meeting them at the point that they yep. are taking a uh, <laughs> a page out of the Lalafellas group. And they are just going out and full on harassing them at the spawn Well, point. they're just not letting them regroup. Like, yep. that's the next plan, right? We're not going to let you have that time to regroup. And it is now a farm fiesta. Can we someone go back for the actual? Yeah, any crystals? <laughs> Where is the crystal? Anybody remember where we left the part of the crystal? Oh, oh there we go. We can actually see the Ghostbusters Looks like someone's sneaking in. Us. Yeah. But now it is going to be two on one there uh, in order to try and stop that. The guard is popped, trying to hold that crystal back. But the thing but is, this, this might actually play in their favor because right now, Hot Tub Esports seems to be really good at sending all five players on one target. Whereas if we manage to separate the teams, we can make these little jewels being going on so that they don't have that sort of burst potential that they had before. It means that it's going to be a much longer fight here. Yeah, Hot Tub um, bringing two players back here because it was Ghostbusters tank that was in there trying to heal himself and keep himself alive while the rest of the team managed to hold it together. It does look like uh, still we have not had a death. Oh, the limit breaks are being popped. They're trying desperately to bring hot hot one player yeah. from Hot Tub Esports down. Just one, and it might be Yusha. No, just Here managed to get that health back up. Oh, Ross getting knocked up there. I think picking up a chocobo feather because of that. Yeah, I think, he, yeah, I think he just got into the safe zone. That does give him oh, some Oh, but he did kill well. Yusha. Yusha did not get into the safe zone. Yusha has gone down. There is a death for Hot Tub Esports. Are we asking and a count? And Gimpy has gone down for Hot Tub oh. Esports as well, Alex. Oh, it looks like we're having two down, but there is one death on Ghostbusters. This does not mean the end, but we are out of limit breaks on Hot Tub Esports here. And you can see Raven they making are, his way back. They they are oh, God, this could be a moment here for the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters finally managing to get on point. They will be able to get all, four, uh, all five of their team back together. They're looking like they're in a pretty good position in terms of their limit breaks. They'll have a few yeah. of them up. Plenty um, of time here, though, for Hot Tub Esports to get the fault. And here they are. Look at them waiting around the corner, stalking like a cat, ready to get back into the action. And I would be very afraid now if I was the Ghostbusters because they're coming with the fire and the fury. They really are. And so there we, we go. We have an engagement going down. Oh, I thought we had two going down. Some going really, really low. guards up just the in time. Uh, and yeah, oh God, Hot Tub look very strong right here. I just don't think the Ghostbusters just had enough time there to regroup and regather full, full power mm -hmm. before Hot Tub might have had all that map length. Ooh, but we do have maybe two ultimates going off at the same time there. They try to synchronize them, unfortunately, sending out the Phoenix there instead of Bahamut. Phoenix is nowhere near as much damage. It's more of a survival tool. Yep. Um, so didn't really manage to get that going, but we're going in for one the last fray. Oh, so many Raven Raven are going so on. Oh, Raven Raven goes Raven. Raven. down here. We've also lost Boyer. We've Woo! got Yippee. Hot Top Esports and Ross goes down as well. It's down to one player versus the Ghostbusters. And yeah. there goes the full team wipe. Wow. What? They're dragging this back. 42 Come seconds Come on, remaining. baby. Ghostbusters are having four of their members. They have only got four players here. They need to regroup. as Because everybody on Hot Top died at the same time there, which means they all did. five players will be coming back very much similarly. But luckily, the Ghostbusters are to get to that checkpoint. Yeah, but of course, like we have the ass um, limit break here. I do believe buffing their team and nerfing the enemy team. It could really help them out in this final yeah. fight here as we are about to be going into overtime in 15 seconds. It's all kicking off as we have lost one person in Ghostbusters already. The rest of their team looking pretty low now. The Ghostbusters um, need a victory here to stay yeah. in the tournament. It is do or die at this point as we have three seconds for overtime. We will need the Ghostbusters to pull it here out, but they are going down now. We're going into overtime, so you really need the Ghostbusters to be on the point at all times if they leave it for any 
reasonable length of time, then that's it. The game is going to be over. The thing is, is that we've already lost three members of Ghostbusters yeah, right now. Although one there, of them is really, one really by wanting in, and no, they uh, couldn't hold it. And that will be the end, sadly, ran out of, of the time. Ghostbusters 2022 Questling Conflict Tournament as Hot Tub Esports has advanced. Wow. You pledged with the right team, though. I did. What a game. It, what a game. What a game. From the almost unstoppable Hot Tub Esports we saw in game one mm -hmm. to that full team wipe, the Ghostbusters should have no qualms about how well they played there. Oh, no. Being able to drag that back, the thing is they used two of their LBs that I thought was going to be essential. They used the White Mage one, which does a big old beam and it stuns everyone, does a ton of damage, um, as well as the um, Summoner one. Those two combined can pretty much wipe an entire team if you time them correctly, and they kind of whiffed a little bit. And I was like, oh, that's it. There's no way that they're going to be getting back from this. And then I was wrong. They were able to go in, get that AoE done correctly. But, of course, just wasn't enough. But really, really good showing from Ghostbusters there. But Hot Tub Esports advancing to the semifinals. And who will they play? So we've got an interesting match coming up here. We have the brave authoritarian and justice-loving Crystal Crawlers. The Crystal Crawlers looking to once again prove to Alpha Nell that the Crystal Braves <laughs> was not an entire cock-up uh, and will be facing off against Team Allegan, released from their prison deep in the Crystal Tower after a blood spot from Grahats here managed to secretly find its way inside and release them from their tombs. Well, who are you favoring out of those two? Because although I, I, I would like to say that evildoers never triumph over justice, that has not been the case for the first two rounds, though. That is true. Uh, that is true. Two teams that we definitely need to keep an eye on is going to be the Lala Fellas and, Ghost and uh, Hot Tub Esports after mm -hmm. their performance here today, whitewashing their other teams in 2-0 victories yep. um, and in impressive style. So the quest of the night will obviously be I watching the VOD back. What exactly did they do? Mm -hmm. uh, how did they do that? And oh my God, please don't do it again. <laughs> uh, but we absolutely do know that the Hot Tub Esports has weakness. They, they did get the full team wipe. It yeah. happened. Well, uh, the thing is as well, it's that... With these elegant, they, they are a little bit mysterious, but they have blessed us with a little bit of knowledge going into this. So maybe this will help us make up our minds and let's have a little bit of a listen in to yeah. see what. Let's see what Team Allegan has, has to, to say, say about yeah. this next match. Captain, I got the report you asked for. Uh, good, the report on the Crystal Crawlers buyout. Let's have a quick look. Wait, they refused? Uh, well, I was hoping it wouldn't resort to this, but they leave us no other choice. Listen here, you inferior little pencil pushers. I know your sub-brick intelligence is legend, but I at least thought you had the basic animal instinct of self-preservation. Worry not, though. We have other ways of making you fall in line. Allegans, charge your weapons and set them to kill. No stuns this time. Resistance is futile, as you'll soon learn, Crystal Crawlers. Oh dear. Pencil oh dear. Pushes. Pencil pushes. Resistance is futile. The weak Set weapons shall to perish. kill. Set weapons to kill. Team Allegan falling from the sky, ready to dominate and bring and put an end to justice. The thing is, I wanted the Crystal uh, Crawlers to win. But now, I'm scared that they won't. <laughs> <laughs> the promo was actually maybe a little worried about that. I am I'm very worried. <laughs> I hope they're going to be okay, because technology, not super useful inside the arena. Uh, they're not going to be able to whip out any... Uh, we can any bring a, you can bring a machinist. You can't yeah, bring a machinist, but gadgets, uh, suppose, Team but... Allegan is definitely looking to upset some people. They would, they looked reasonable up until it got very dark very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't yeah. look like they were going to be happy. But uh... oh, the Crystal Crawlers, though, they, they've got they've got a lot to prove. You know, the first time around with the Braves and everything didn't really go too well for them. But you know, maybe they have a bit of a response to all of this. Maybe we can have a little bit of a listen in to see what they have to say. So let's hear from the Crystal Crawlers. Team Allegan. My, 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 what do you think you're doing? Bribing a man of authority and respect. <sighs> now listen here, maggot. You're all but citizens under our boots. And when it comes to plebs like you who break the law, well, you either kiss the boot or you get it shoved up with the sun don't shine. Hell yeah, brother. 
we'll see you lot in the arena. And boy, if we catch any of you, we ain't gonna make no arrest. We're just gonna take you out. We are the law around here, and we take no prisoners. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Uh, what kind of? I mean, this is I, actually this is isn't this the Crystal Brave mentality that caused the Crystal Braves to collapse? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, um, yeah, uh, interesting. I'm not quite sure they understood the goal of Alpha No because yeah. they seem like bad cops. So we've got two villain teams. I didn't realize. I have a feeling I, body cams are off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, there'll need to be. There'll need to be. The Crystal Crawlers uh secret villains. There we go. Oh, my God. I'm still wow. going to back them. I'm still going to back the Crystal Crawlers. There was, there was just something about that hell yeah. That <laughs> hell yeah, me. brother. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Good. Well, so good. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our final game of round one. Yeah. Of We will see who is moving and the final team advancing into this. It is your Crystal Crawlers versus Team Allegan. Yes. Here we go. Loading in to our favorite map. And the Astra team on the blue team. Oh, <laughs> production, no sound. Uh, we do have the Crystal Crawlers. I, oh, is that the team? Al no, that's Team Allegan, excuse me. And on the Umbra team, we have the Crystal Crawlers. We do indeed. So lovely, you see their badges are on. And uh, they are still sort of re representing justice. Yeah, well, you know, or, you know, impersonating them which in itself <laughs> is more of a crime one of the two is yeah. happening right now we're just gonna take a pause while we make sure we get you guys some sound because if i don't fit the, if i don't see those juicy limit i hear those juicy limit breaks oh yeah it's not even worth it you so know what i mean just working on making sure we get a little bit of sound our yeah, way we'll get it, it fixed guys don't good. worry about it uh let's see as you can see team allegan is more than ready for this oh action. yeah they certainly are it's uh, i just love because the thing is when you go into these games and you're doing it in solo queue you know, you don't really have that theme going on. And there's something about, like, because we're doing Ultimate Progress at the moment, and we're all in theme clothes as well, but only for Ultimate. There's something about just having your entire <laughs> team workouts. together there, just all in matching outfits, ready to absolutely annihilate. We've got sound and no music, so I assume music will kick in at the same Yeah, it'll, it'll kick in when yeah, it Yeah, I can hear some tippy touch of foot, no music. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice. Oh, I think that might be the error that just happened. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, there it is. Yep, I got so some we music. Got it now. Yay! All right, so let's see. They're going for this. Oh, I think there's been a change of the meta. I'll... They're, they're, no one waits anymore. No this one just waits. Rude. Blood. No touching of gloves as we are getting to the Oh, the crystal Oh, but well, it's four for four. They lost Woden at the same time. And it's, this is going to be an attrition war. As we can see, the teams are pushing to try and take that extra kill. As we are in a 4-4 four four situation, and it, recovery on health, Al. And it really does seem like Team Elegant is in a little bit of a worse situation right now in terms of their health bars. Really quite low. Um, and yeah, of course, struggling here. only to having two DPS, they're going to struggle to take out any of the members of the Crystal Crew. Has anybody right remembered there's a crystal involved in this game? Yeah, it's unlocked, by the way, guys. You can go push that if you want. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Somebody's headed back for it. Well, we moved it a little bit. There we go. We've remembered now. Um, but oh, Team Alec losing. It another. looks like it's four and four again. Yeah, we're just each team is taking turns of taking out another one, uh, member. But oh, we're getting some very, very. Um, very, very low. Very low place. Right Nobody cares about the crystal. This is an interesting strategy. I, 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 I kind of like this. <laughs> the crystal's not a problem if you can wipe out the enemy team, which no one has been able to do, actually. So yeah. the, the idea, the plan is sound. We just weren't able to execute. <laughs> which would be why to kill the whole team, then we can push the crystal uh, as we get through it. But not saying no to justice. Boris standing tall and standing proud there. Uh, team Allegan using whatever tools they can as the crystal is now moving forward. As the crystal uh, crawlers we have so many limit breaks, you're going to oh, see a blood bath imminent. pick up any second right now. We're going to have so many deaths if these limit breaks are used. But unfortunately, uh, we are seeing some deaths on the side of the crystal. Uh, crystal crawlers here. They're just yeah, not able. down. And there it goes. Oh, almost. Yeah, there's, yeah, the, there's third, the third, unfortunately. They should reset. They've got a lot of LB. You can yeah. see it on the right-hand side there. They're only missing two LBs right now. And there goes the healer. Asuka dropping back and waiting for the reset. Totally the right thing to do right now. We should be seeing Team Allegan going and farming them. Because every single time that the enemy team has done that, it's really prevented a team it's from like, regrouping. It's regrouping. Yeah. So you can see three of the crawlers have, are regrouping here. You can see them hanging around, but they're vulnerable right now. Only needs one to move that crystal. Won't yeah. move faster with having all the team in there. And what we saw at Hot Tub Esports, and we saw this the same out of the Lala fellas, they did not allow their team to regroup. They ran to their spawn point, at least four of them. But time and was given. Whoa, Whoa there we go. Buff. 
Master no, yeah, all seen. over Team Oligan, three and members down. And that was two of their LBs just completely gone. Unfortunately, we do lose one member of the Crystal um, Crawlers right now, but we should still be able to push through as Team Oligan is getting completely destroyed. Yeah, you can see Boris here having to push back and half the Crystal Crawlers, woo, 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 pull <laughs> over. Pull over, Boris. A license and registration, sir. Managed to pick up one of those little health packs. He actually managed to escape by the looks of it. Yeah, and he's got a hold for his team here. His team is going to be back on its feet. And now the Crystal Ooh. Crawlers may be overextended. They have. The Crawlers have overextended. They need to start pulling back. But we are actually getting the Crawlers pushing that Crystal into the blue team side, which is really, really a positive thing. Having that oh, <laughs> White Mage LB go off, seemingly whiffing, not doing a yeah, whole lot. Yeah, it didn't do much there to sway this battle. The Crawlers are looking pretty low, though. If you look at their health bars, they're really struggling to get them up. It's just pinging backwards and forwards. Oh, that was a combination. Oh, yes. Three yes. deaths instantly, combo. Alex. That was a lot. <laughs> that Crystal Ooh. is on its way back. Team Allegan is moving that Crystal in the right direction as they're fighting off to the side now, giving good opportunities to get that Crystal moving. My yeah. God. And now they're going to circle round and try and get it. But they're not together, Alex. They are. No. And the thing is, is that... Now they're farming them. That's Now good. they're not letting them regroup. Crawl is doing the right thing there, then. Making sure... Oh, uh, no. Alligan, yeah, Alligan, sorry. Alligan uh, is uh, making the right sure thing. those crawlers cannot regroup and get strong again. Only takes one to move that crystal. Drop it back a little bit. Now the crawlers are at a higher strength threshold. Four players up. Now the fifth has been resurrected. But they just need... So oh, back and forward. Mm. Using that guard just to Team soak Alligan. some damage. They just have those LBs available that they can start using to take people out. But there we go. The combination of that Dancer charm on top of the White Mage LB just absolutely taking out two members. 43 seconds this. remain until overtime. So can Allegan push that final 20 feet? Maybe. Here it goes. Oh, here it goes. It's getting closer. Now, the Crawlers do have players up, but walking in is certain death, and they know oh, it. They know it. Justice did not prevail in game one. Well, is there any justice amongst these teams? Uh, team Allegan's very aggressive opening, which seems to be... I, I, I know the teams that have moved through now are like, okay, do we either continue this very aggressive opener? Because everybody who's held back has kind of been caught like... Oops. Yeah, they, they uh, can't really recover their footing. It seems like they're knocked no. off balance and they never recover at any sort of point. Where exactly. The thing is, if, if two of the teams are just plowing into each other, though, you know, that's going to be a little bit um, interesting because we haven't really seen that. One team has always seemed to be a little bit on the back foot. None of them have really met in that sort of headlong charge. Yeah, um, we've, we've seen, uh, obviously, storing. I mean, there's a very aw awkward scenario where we saw the Crystal Crawlers. They had their LBs banked. Mm -hmm. They come in and they managed to do full team wipe, Team yep. Allegan, except for Boris, who made... Are such a good play we saw from Boris Pavlov there is that he drew, he's managed to survive, he drew the like three or five, three, three out of five of the crawlers all the way back to the Allegan spawn point, mm -hmm. which overextended them. They couldn't leave the crystal because crawlers needed to get that crystal moving around the corner. And then uh, once all four came back to life, that was it. It was a feeding frenzy for yeah. Team Allegan there. So Team Allegan does take game one of the best of three series. If Team Allegan take the next game, that will be bye-bye for the Crystal Bra uh, the crystal Crawlers. And just like the Crystal Braves. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it would be a shame as well, because at no point have we had a Game 3 yet. So um, it's uh, it'll be really nice to kind of get into a position where we have that sort of back and forth, and it'll be like that, you know, best of one at the end, pretty much. I think we're going to see after this, uh, because we obviously had a purely RNG drawing as what's going yeah. on. But what we're seeing, of course, is... Teams moving forward that are very aggressive, They're very, aggressive. very nasty, and unprepared, maybe, the other teams for just how aggressive and how nasty some of these teams are. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, what we've seen, if you've missed any of the games, is the Lalafellas, the Lalafell Mafia itself, oh, yeah. have easily been the most destructive force we have seen in the tournament so far. Yeah, and I think probably just behind them seems to be Hot Tub Esports, mm -hmm. and then just maybe behind them, the que Quest of the Night, in terms of how much they stomped, so to speak. Yeah, the Lala um, Fellas was actually just very, very nasty. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, it was awful to watch, actually, the <laughs> shitty is, uh, get taken out so quickly. Hot Sub Esports did show some signs of vulnerability. Ghostbusters did manage to get a full team wipe on them in game two, mm -hmm. uh, but unable to capitalize for the win as Hot Sub Esports regained their ground and then continued to finish them off and adapted to a, a shifting style uh, that was showing in that match. If you are the Crystal Crawlers right now, you're now ready for what will be a very aggressive opener. Yeah, so I, I think not only are you ready for an opener, but you also kind of get an idea of roughly how they play. 
and the fact that they will do sly tactics to maybe draw you out and that they will try and farm you. Maybe it's best that if you do die and you're dying in a second rate and you want to reset, stay on your platform. They can't get you while you're up there. So if you just kind of chill there and wait and go as a wave, those sorts of things. But I think because these teams haven't had a whole lot to warm up, it's it, at the moment it might even come down to which team is warming up the best, who well, can warm up quickest. And, well, it seemed like Allegan got it last time. Let's see if they can do it this time. It's it Team is. Allegan on the blue side. Um, <laughs> it's Bob it's do or die. <laughs> it is. It's do or die for the Crystal Crawlers here. There they are. Kao, uh, Ka Kua and Aka Asuka. Let's see if they can pull it out the back, bring it to a draw, and still have an opportunity to stay in this game. But oh. we'll have to wait and see. There you can see the blue. The very perfect, very well ironed, very well groomed outfits of the Crystal Crawlers there. We are looking forward to a sweet victory from them as they do their final preparations, get their muscles working as much as possible. And over on the other side, we have Team Allegan. There pretty they much. are, stretching up. Dalalafels are getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much a full-ranged team uh, coming in from uh, Team Allegan there, only having their tank be the melee player. Yep. Kind of allows, because the, the thing is, Warrior can be so obnoxious. You've oh, got things where you so drag people out, in yeah. and root them. You've got something where you can jump on top of someone and it's basically an AOE stun with that primal rend. It's absolutely nasty. So it's kind of like the Warrior right now. Is just It'll be interesting to see on this if the Warrior's the first one to charge in while everyone else pulls back a little Crystal bit. Crystal Crawl's again going for that defensive posture, but you can see Team Allegan yeah. having oh. none oh. of it. And Whoa. Odin is dead. Already. The Crystal Crawlers have lost their healer as well. This opener. This opener that Team Allegan has is utterly mince meat. They maker. just were not ready for that primal ren that absolutely stunned their entire team, taking out so many of them. But we have got two people dead on the crawler's side, but no one else just yet. It looks like they're not bleeding out. We've That's now got everyone alive. We can start to regroup and hopefully we don't have any more deaths on the crawler's side. Well, Death what right now is going to be in a really bad position, but it doesn't look like we're going to have some folks go down. Maybe we not. saw Team Allegan again, that Boris Pavlov of Team Allegan again baited several Team Allegan away from the crawler's position and it paid off. He did not die. He managed to get some of Team Allegan out of position, which bought time for his team to get back into it. But unfortunately, Asuka has gone down for the Crystal Crawlers as well. <laughs> Oh, as Woden again, Woden not having a good day. No, that 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 limit break coming in from the white mage there, absolutely annihilating. But we are seeing Bob go pretty low. Yeah, um, but being best. a warrior is able to get himself up pretty quickly with the help of um, the white mage. Oh, there comes a big Ooh. stun in Just coming in from the crystal crawlers. Was it enough? Yes, it was. It was not. No, it wasn't. Oh, oh, unfortunately. Allegan, unfortunately, well, unfortunately for the crawlers, not able crawlers. to. Uh, not quite there. Keep and there we go. Up. First checkpoint met for Team Allegan. And the Crystal Crawlers need this win to stay in the tournament. But now we're seeing that same strategy once oh, again of not letting the teams regroup, going up to their graveyard and trying to stop them getting a five-man gang together. So if I was the other teams right now, Alex, hmm. how do we defend against this? We have to stay up on the platform. Do not jump down. Don't I, get into the war. I, I think they need to start picking some targets, especially the ones that just got knocked up in the air. Look how low people are when they come down. You... Well, actually, most of them. Yeah, trying to, in fact, it was the Crystal yeah. Crawlers who got cut out of position, ah, now, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, oh, Bob's going down, yeah, though. We've got Bob the, the, the Crystal! The crystal Gold. Team Allegan has forgotten <laughs> the Crystal! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, it's Warsaw Gulch nightmares all over again and with everyone fighting in mid. And the Crawlers managing to get three members of Allegan down. Oh, three like members of the team. And there we go. Shy is... Uh, Steven has had to... Yeah, it was Shy. Shy has had to leave the Crystal. Two oh, many of Team Allegan are dead. And they're killing them off in a staggered way, as you're going to see waiting room right here going down. Unlock. This is a real opportunity now for the Crystal Crawlers. Yeah. They're going to be fine. Now, what they need to watch for is Limit Break Nightmare. There's two LBs available for Team Allegan. If they stay all clustered on this crystal, they could be in big trouble. Uh, yeah, the thing is, is that the, the uh, Dancer LB charming everyone and dragging them in, the Warrior LB doing some AoE damage and making them uh, weak to other, and um, just generally weaker. This is something Lalafels did well. It was not standing on the crystal during that moment. Check but this out. The ju they comboed it, and I do believe that will be enough to maybe take one or two people down, but maybe they just didn't no, have I the output. They oh, no. There we go. The crawlers are oh, starting crawlers to lose players. crawlers have lost Woden. Yeah, they the didn't quite survive it. Now, they've maintained it. Again, they're full focus on Woden. I think their goal Whoa. here is just to get it down to four versus five. 
And that worked as well as Crystal Crawl's healer, Kawa, has gone down. Alligan is going to clean up. You can see Boris there, the machinist, having his LB ready. That does a ton of damage at really, really far range, just allowing you to pick someone off. He's not even bothering using it at the moment. It looks like they're even playing with their food to even offset the respawn timers even more here. Yeah, I it think does so seem too. like Alligan are able to gain control back off of the um, off of the crawlers. And now, much more to see the crawler run for your life. Oh, not quite. Ooh. But that is, a, oh, like you just pointed out, Al, playing with their food is a good way of putting it. It's it like, don't kill him just yet. Mm -hmm. Make him run. Make him sweat. Because if we kill him a little later, that's fine for us. And if crystal crawlers cannot, they have a chance to regroup here. They are waiting for one more player to get on their feet. They're waiting for Lena to get standing. But they have to get in soon because that crystal is coming and it is out Look of the at tournament. The LBs in the for the crawlers, though. They could do this. If they pop everything all at once on the correct people, they can push their way through and potentially team wipe them. Let's see if they're able to pull it off. It looks like the kind of hold the line there. The, the looks like the combination of LBs just wasn't sufficient. Unless the Dragoon hasn't come down yet, although I think he has. Yeah. Uh, um, there's only one left, just as soon as LB is available. Well, quite that, good at executing. Crystal tippy toeing oh. into its finale. It, oh, and low health bars on both teams here, but it does seem like Allegans are able to keep themselves a little bit healthier for a little bit longer. I lied! Allegans are going Oh, out. God! Team Allegan has lost waiting room as... Oh, God! The Crystal Crawlers have I lost Wilden again. I think... And that's oh. another member! Three oh, three. Allegan has gone down and the Crystal's it's gone back! Oh, my God! Over time! Over time! Right time. Allegans... The, the, the Crawlers have to hold on here. They're three members just holding on for They're dear so life. They're their graveyard as well. You can see the Boris, though. He might be able to take a random person out when he wants with that machinist oh, LB. Oh, Crawler's Waiting room will so be much has there. as well. Two members of support are coming in, though. Two supporting members are coming into the fray. Can they help out? Oh. Kawa has come down for the Crystal Crawlers. They're holding this crystal as tough as they can, fighting tooth and nail right now. As there, there is in big trouble, as the rest of the team is there. LB's come out! No. And it's a full team wide oh. for the Crystal Crawlers. And that will be game for Team Allegan. Oh, God, they held on. They were s That was a heroic ending. That was so close. But you just saw Team Allegan. Something that was really good amongst that chaos is how well... Like, every time they used an LB, they partnered it with another LB or another good form of CC. That was actually really impressive. Like, we've seen a lot of stomps going on. That's the first time that I've seen some really, really nice combinations in team play from Team Elegant there. So big, big props. I'm super sad because, of course, I was hoping that Alphano wouldn't be sad again, but he's just going to be miserable. Maybe for another expansion. Home over the horizon. Sad. Alphano will be sat in his little booties thinking about what happened. And there we can see our next round brackets, ladies and gentlemen. Hot Top Esports will take on Team Elegant. The Lala fellas will take on the Quez of the night. We have seen, uh, I mean, what an opening first round, Al. We saw everything from close games, backs and forth, to brutal, sadistic, <laughs> torturous games <laughs> with teams being absolutely mullered into the floor, which is exactly what we expected. So far, we've seen no one take it to game three. Nope. Whoever's taken game one has taken it to game, uh, has won game two as well and taken the series. So will we see that as now we are moving forward and these stronger teams are now going to collide head to head? I, I, I can totally, I expect that we're going to start to see some closer matches now um, because... Uh, Right now, we have victory. All of everyone's riding, uh, like, you know, they're feeling good. They're feeling strong. They managed to 2 0. So, even if they do get knocked down, it's like, oh, we still know what victory is like. We still are able to do it. Let's just pull it together and let's just do what we did before. So, I think they all have that sort of mind space to be able to keep on going and keep pushing through, getting uh, some more interesting and tighter games. But, my lord. My question is do you think crazy. these guys are watching what's happening in these other games? Because, of course, they're observing how the other teams are playing, what kind of strategies they come up with. Are we going to see some shift now? So what we've seen over the course of round one is some definite shift in the, into from game one, where it was very defensive posturing. Yep. People wondering, like, who's engaging first? We saw, like, the Grime Scene Investigators putting somebody out there to try and bait some attacks so they could switch in. Then we saw when uh, Hot Top Esports came into their games, it's like, balls to that. They went straight in onto the Ghostbusters and managed to claim some early wins. Then we saw after that that we that uh, the Lala Fellas did the same thing. Mm. Is that kind of where the shift went? And we saw that again here now with Team Allegan not waiting around, picking their target, picking Woden out, getting him out of there. And then we saw this kill them before they can regroup. 
farm yep. them. We need one person on the crystal, farm them. And in fact, now we've seen, in the, certainly of the eight games we've had so far, is that we have seen now that most teams are abandoning the crystal regularly. Like the crystal secondary to just getting rid of the players. To the point where we've seen uh, in the last game we watched, Al, <laughs> Star Crystal went back all the way from the checkpoint to mid. Yeah, um, I can't help but feel that that isn't a ref uh, that 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 needs to be a refinement. I think I think we should probably stop leaving the crystal just to return. Um, but then again, it did win. You know, it did work. In, th in theory, if it's got that crystal's got a clean run, it's ten seconds to get it from mid to it's ten yeah. fifteen seconds to get it from once mid it's to done, it's locked. Get it going. Yeah, yeah. I, I think once you've unlocked that middle point and you you can just pass it easily, so it's it's nowhere near as punishing. Um, so yeah, no, I guess it's not it's not too bad. It's, it's not very, a terrible strategy. Well, a lot of fellas put it to most uses. They just they put it into the checkpoint and then they just left. Uh, immediately. It came back when the checkpoint was complete. One thing that is really interesting about this, like, immediately initiate sort of thing is that I think that most players aren't used to that because, generally speaking, it feels like with my, you know, limited experience in um, solo queue with this um, with this format, is that generally you do go close and then maybe you have a little bit of pokey, a little bit of pokey. Oh, now the crystal's available. Everyone jumps in. It's almost like it's a second countdown for everyone to Royal Rumble. It's rare that you necessarily, unless you have some sneaky people that are, like, uh, flanking and all that kind of stuff. It's Whereas kind of this time, you know, the, the teams that were embracing the fact that they are all on comms and they can all do it from the very beginning. Exactly what I was going to uh, say. They um, seem to have the upper hand because it, it, it seems like whoever engages first generally wins. This is the difference between the organized matchups and what you'll see in solo queue. And you, you, you eloquated that perfectly, is that you can actually afford to make decisions that you don't want to die first in solo queue. That's kind of your yeah. first goal when you go into solo queue is I don't want to be the idiot who walks in and dies, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to be that guy. So you kind of like hold back. I hope they don't target me. I'll get ready with my early guard and get really defensive about it uh, and see what the rest of my team is doing. I mean, also people use macros. is like, I'm attacking Gunbreak. Uh, you know, I'm attacking Machinist, whatever oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And they're communicating that way. We see some people throw out marks to try and organize this herding kittens aspect <laughs> of the crystalline conflict. But what we see here is when we start putting some organization, it's like, okay, I'll stay. I'll go. It's, you, there's nobody duplicating tactics. I'm dropping back. Defend me. I need to do my full heal. I need to use my potion. I need to regenerate. I'm running low on mana. Give me some time. Uh, co and most importantly that we've seen, coordinating limit breaks is oh, yeah. utterly brutal when done correctly or a massive waste when it's whiffed. Yeah. It, 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 in theory... Like, if you do it correctly, there's no counter. They, they, like, unless they pre-guard it. But if you start it with a CC immediately, like, if it all comes in at once and you're not prepared for it, you are just dead. It's yep. just that the overall incoming damage is, like, triple your health pool or something stupid, depending on your combination. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually... Although Alligan, like, Team Alligan didn't look as stompy as the Lalafellas uh, as an example... I'm kind of starting to draw towards them just because I saw quite a lot of that sort of um, team play. It honestly seemed like you had five nightmarishly good individual players on Lala, uh, Lala but they didn't even need to use their team play. They just went in and just decided to stomp because it was funny. Whereas Team Alagon, I saw a bit more of that team play. I'm kind of interested to see how they I've kind got, of I've got to ask the question then. Who's your pick? Uh, we, obviously, uh, my pick's out. Yeah. Uh, I've got to I, I did pledge my sides with the Ghostbusters who are unfortunately not here, so you're forced to stick with Hot Tub Esports. Yep. I think I'm going to shift my pledge over now to the Lala Fellas. I, if they I can continue that meat grinder assault that they put forward, then we are going to. It's a very bad time for the Quez of the Night. Uh, but oh, yeah. the Quez have paid attention. They've seen how the game has developed over today. They will know what to do. So it is. It's going to be an interesting round two, but what we can say without without any doubt in our minds, Al, round one is complete. It certainly is. We have lost four teams from the tournament. Four have been eliminated. The Grime Scene Investigators are out of here. The Shit Eaters are returning to heaven. The Ghostbusters are going back to New York to enjoy some pizza, and the Crystal Crawlers will I not be it. getting Alphano back in shape. <laughs> oh, God bless them. Bless <laughs> their little cotton socks. So no more Lalafell and Lalafell crime, but what we do have coming up is round two. Yep, and as we are preparing for that, we are going to be jumping ourselves to a little bit of a break, but With do not twist. go anywhere. It does have a twist. So don't go anywhere. We'll and there's back. a giveaway coming. So. Oh, yeah, there's also a giveaway. <laughs> there's loads of good you stuff. You want to win some prizes? Here it goes. Roll it, Chris. Yeah. Are you tired of falling on your ass every time you want to use a PC? Me too, but I don't. You know why? The name? Rex Tyson. And I'm a world-renowned chiropractor and sexologist. I want to introduce you to GT Omega. GT Omega gets everybody pregnant all the time. I use GT Omega so I don't fall down. 
I could lie down. I could sit down. I could roll over. I could even crash into walls if I want to. I could do anything I want with GT Omega. Doesn't matter if you're poor, you can use the discount code provided by Preach Gaming. Want to know how I got this swole? I have not one chair, two chairs, three chairs, four chairs, five chairs. I know what you're thinking. Hey, Rex, I can't be as swole as you and get me one of these chairs, but you can. Look in the chat right now, because there's a giveaway code, and you can win one for free. Not only that, even women can sit in these chairs. Well, that's all you're going to get from Rex Tyson today. i got to get back to winning the World Superbike Championship. So remember, next time you go to use a PC, sit in a chair. <laughs>
Feeding, they called it, but I was bloody hungry. I didn't see any feeding going on. Anyway, by the end, we decided the game had been going on for far too long. Three weeks! <laughs> Three weeks! And the referee stopped the match, of course. And he said, um, we had to finish. Because there was no one else watching anymore. Everybody had gotten too drunk, gone home. So eventually we came to a gentleman's agreement, then we'll call it a draw. And it was the first ever questioning conflict that ended in a draw. They asked me to go and to coach, but uh, then those Lalafels showed up. Have you ever seen one of those things? Terrifying. And they look at you from down there, wah, wah, over and over again. Well, anyway, I vomited on one of them, and apparently the league didn't see kindly to that. And so I was removed from my coaching position. It was them bloody lalas. But it worked out kind of well. I had to spend the rest of my days retelling my glory days and being provided with a free drink of Guinness by good fellas like yourself. So I wish all the teams a bloody good job and well played. And... One of you will win, I suppose. That's fine. Are you tired of running into situations with other people? Living in fear of having to socialize with that guy who smells like old socks? Dreading having to converse with someone you met that one time and have nothing in common? As soon as I saw him, I knew I had to have a conversation with him. I didn't know to move left, to move right. I almost vomited on the street. Introducing MoveMate. With MoveMate painted distance intensifying technology, you could subtly avoid all those social situations and the other person will never know. But wait, there's more. Introducing MoveMate Plus. MoveMate Plus comes with our patented long range stealth MoveMate technology. Now you can use your MoveMate to move awkward individuals without raising any suspicion that you were involved at all. Your life will be so much easier and free of burden. Thank you, MoveMate. You've made my life so much better. I can do so many things I could have never done before. This is fantastic. Simply use one Twitch subscription to get your MoveMate now or five subs for MoveMate Plus, and it's painted long-range stealth MoveMate technology. Why wait to make your life perfect?